In this video, I'm going to share with you six reasons why you absolutely must learn Python in 2021. Hello friends and welcome back. This is a video I've wanted to make for quite some time by now because I'm super passionate about Python and I think it's an absolute must to learn, especially if you're just starting your coding journey. And yes, even though I'm particularly biased here because learning Python was single-handedly the best decision I took for both my life and my career, a lot of other developers seem to have my shared attitude and love for Python as well. And that community of Python lovers is growing and growing every year. On the Stack Overflow survey of the most loved programming languages in 2015, Python was the 10th on that list. However, in the same Stack Overflow survey for 2020, Python made it all the way up to third place. And if that doesn't convince you yet, then let's take a look at this. For the most in-demand languages category, Python was the third in 2015 and it moved all its way up to the first place in 2020 with a significant leap. I can also guarantee you that Python will always be in the top 10 most popular languages of any programming language. Languages list. So without further ado, let's dive into why that is. Python is very easy and simple to understand. And the reason for that is that when it was developed by Guido von Rossum as a side project, by the way, just an FYI, crazy to think that one of the most popular programming languages nowadays was just a side project at some point. Anyways, Guido developed it with the goal in mind to make it as easily readable as possible and with the intention to boost developer productivity as much as possible, which makes it an absolutely great first language to learn. Python has the simplest vocabulary of all programming languages because it literally resembles the English language. And it also has none of these quirky syntax stuff in other languages like braces, semicolons, and terms like static void system, you know. So let's try to demonstrate this in action, shall we? Let's say you want to write a code snippet that prints hello world. In Java, that program code would look something like this, but in Python, it would look something like this. Just looking at these two code snippets actually says a lot about this entire difference. In the Java version, for me to be actually able to understand what this code snippet does, I would need to know what terms like static, void, or class actually mean. So as you would imagine, for someone who has never written code before, I would have such a hard time understanding what this Java code snippet does. Whereas in contrast, the Python code snippet just literally states what the code snippet does, which is print hello world. In addition, in Java, there is also some initialization or let's say starting overhead to both getting familiarized with these language specific idioms and for writing such a simple code snippet but more on that later. And this makes it more difficult to understand and write. While in Python, there are no particular words that can only be understood by Python programmers. Anyone with a basic English knowledge can understand Python easily. And usually its code is much shorter compared with the same functionality written in other languages. And so because it's so easy to understand, you can learn Python very quickly. Honestly, it took me somewhere between the two and the three month mark back when I was first starting out to get to a junior level. I've also scoured the internet to try and figure out an estimate of how how long it took other people to learn as well so that we have some kind of like a rough estimate and it seems that the general consensus is that it takes a person with no prior coding knowledge about two to three months of relatively consistent practice and that is to get to somewhat to an okayish level or let's say junior and if you're specifically going into python for data science it takes even less time perhaps one or two months of relatively consistent practice to understand the fundamentals just because data science requires very specific use of the Python language, so it is less complicated to learn. Now, it's important to note that these are just rough estimates and could vary from one person to the next, depending on so many factors. But before we move on to the next point, it's also important to note that often developers do their technical coding interviews in Python, and in some cases, even if the role that they're applying for is in another language, just because of how Python is easy to understand and to write. So it's just something to keep in mind. You can develop the same functionality in Python in much less code and compared with other languages. This sort of ties with the previous point that we just talked about, but not really. So let me illustrate this with an example. Let's say I want to write code that creates a list of elements and prints each element in that list. In Java, this would look something like the following. While to do the exact same thing in Python, I would do something like this. Not only does it take less lines to code to perform this exact same functionality, but to echo off on what we just talked about in reason number one, it's way more intuitive to understand and just. That being said, let's take a look at another example. Let's say you want to write a code snippet that defines a list of countries, sorts them alphabetically, and then prints them out. In Java, that code snippet will look something like this, while in Python, the same exact code snippet will look something like this. I think we've established that Python is much easier to understand than many other languages in the previous point, but I cannot help but notice how much this particular example emphasizes that. But from a development perspective time, 
The Java snippet involves seven lines of code, while in Python that involves only four lines of code, which is almost half the lines of code. Now, I know that this is obviously not representative or indicative of Java development time versus Python development time, but this is just a small example to illustrate a point. But what I can say for a known fact is that Python has less boilerplate code than Java and many other languages. This whole point of this less development time or overhead that I'm trying to make here is just a point for allowing you to focus less time on debugging syntax and more time on programming and solving the problem at hand. According to Slash Data, there are now 8.2 million developers in the world who code using Python. Whether you're a beginner or a new experienced developer, this open source language provides you with a huge and reliable community that can help you with any obstacle that can come in your way. And you might ask me, why is that? But before I can tell you why, riddle me this first. If there are 8 million developers today using Python, what are the chances of you running into an issue that none of these 8 million developers ran into before? Exactly, non-existent. In case you didn't get that, that was a mic drop. Anyways, the fact that Python is open source is also places it at a massive advantage compared to other technologies that isn't open source because it attracts so many contributors from so many different backgrounds and ideologies. And so intuitively, the more hands or brains in this case working on improving the language, the more powerful and the more useful the language can become. It is sort of this constant feedback and improvement loop that occurs with anything you open to the public and get feedback on. The more people, the more the feedback and so the more or improvement iterations. You can join various renowned communities such as Stack Overflow, GitHub, etc. Well, you'll find plenty of Python programmers who are always ready to help beginner developers or even seasoned engineers as a matter of fact. Python has a massive collection of extremely rich libraries that do a lot of the required lifting in probably every application domain you can even think of. At the time of recording this video, Python has over 137,000 libraries present today. So if you're interested in working with like multi-dimensional arrays and high level mathematical functions like in the domain of linear algebra, Fourier transform and matrices, ugh. Horrific, don't even remind me. You've got a library like NumPy, for example. If you're interested in the domain of solving scientific problems, there is something like SciPy. If you're interested in the domain of machine learning and data science, there are libraries like TensorFlow, Pandas, Keras, and so on. And oh yeah, before we go on, let me tell you this. I think we've already mentioned it, but let me emphasize this. If the field that you wanna pursue is either machine learning or data science, then it's a no brainer. Python is most definitely the way to go. And the reason for that is that since machine learning is all about complicated algorithms, algorithms and versatile workflows, the simplicity of Python helps developers deal with the complex algorithms and calculations without wanting to blow their brains out. True story, not really. Anyways, so if you're interested in the domain of data analysis and interactive visualization, then you've got things like Plotly or Matlab, Matplotlib. Then you've got things like Matplotlib and Plotly. And if none of these actually interests you and you're more interested in like web development and stuff like that, there's a bunch of popular frameworks like Django, Flask, Tornado, Bottle, and the list goes on. You get the picture. Because there is so much library support for so many domains, you as someone with Python skills have the ability, or let's say the luxury, to choose to work in any of the many different domains that use Python. You could, for example, become a data analyst and use Python data analysis tools or libraries to extract and analyze information for employers like banks, manufacturers, pharmaceuticals, and various consultancies. You could even become a data scientist and create algorithms and predictive models that perform better decision-making processes in things like optimizing Google search search rankings, or LinkedIn recommendations, or influencing the headlines BuzzFeed editors run, for example. You could also become a software engineer like myself and work on back-end solutions and systems like on Sentry's Python SDK, for example, or the Sentry product feature, or the Instagram back-end, or anything that has to do with back-end, really. You could also become an automation tester and work on things like building a test framework from scratch, or converting manual requirements into automated test cases. Or actually, I'm not entirely sure what automation testers do, but you get the idea. The possibilities for you as a Python developer are endless. You just have to choose. Now, because there is such a high demand for Python developers, the salaries for Python developers are also high. Supply and demand, economics. This high demand, in my opinion, can be attributed to many factors. One of which is the increasing popularity of evolving domains like AI, 
data science and machine learning, which many of the big tech players nowadays like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Uber, Dropbox, Instagram, Pinterest, and Reddit are trying to bake into their services as much as possible to not miss out on this competitive edge. And so obviously, and like we just discussed, Python is the secret sauce that makes all of this possible which makes Python developers one of the most sought after developers. Obviously, this varies a lot depending on many factors like level of experience, the country you're in, the domain you're in, and so on. But on average, Python developers get paid relatively higher than most jobs in other programming languages. Just to clarify, I'm not saying that this is the only reason why Python is so popular, but I personally believe it's a significant one. Like I said earlier in the video, if I had to narrow down or simplify my life to just this one decision, it would most definitely be learning Python. Learning Python has opened so many doors for me from job opportunities to travel to great fulfilling work to meeting amazing awesome people along the way and many other decisions or life events that have cascaded out of this one decision and so as crazy and as cliche as this sound learning python was single-handedly the best decision i've ever taken in my life I highly recommend it to begin with for sure. If I've convinced you somewhat to start learning Python, check out my other video where I share with you an actionable plan on how to start coding in 2021 using something that I invented called the lab system. I know quirky name. I provide links to courses that I personally think are great to make sure, so make sure to check it out. That being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.